This is the point in the job where you really earn your stripes. You're going to probably have to be laying over top of a drive shaft tunnel. Likely there's going to be stuff sticking up into your gut. You'll probably have to weld left-handed, upside down, backwards, with the foot pedal in between your knees to control the heat of the weld, and then you get a leg cramp. Congratulations! You're a welder. Guys, today we continue work on our 1959 Volvo PV544. As you guys know, a couple weeks ago we picked up this car right out of the junkyard. It was about to hit the crusher and we saved it. If you've been watching the other videos, you know that we are turning this thing into a lightweight, all-out race car. And because of that, we need to have the appropriate safety equipment in order to do that. So today we're going to talk all about building a roll cage. So let's talk about where do you get started. Now of course the first thing that you should do is research. You need to figure out what the class that you plan to participate in, whether it be drifting, autocross, drag racing, land speed racing, what that class requires for you to put in the car. These cage designs may look totally different from one another. A full roll cage in like autocross, I believe requires inch and three quarter tubing, whereas in drag racing, it requires inch and five eighths. So you really need to nail down exactly what is required before you do anything. From there, you can start doing research on what options are out there. Now, if you're working on something like a Mustang or a Camaro, chances are there is a pre-bent, ready-to-weld-in kit out there for you to buy. In most cases, I would recommend people go that direction. That can be a little bit of a challenge because a lot of times these kits don't really fit too well. And they're really just designed to fit as many cases as possible. And, you know, let's say you gutted the door out and you could run the bar out and give yourself a little more room. They don't take that into account because there might be somebody that's running a factory door panel. That being said, if you're working on something a little out of the ordinary, such as this car, you're going to run into the fact that nobody makes parts for this car. Either that or you'll run into the kit is so expensive that you're better off buying the tools yourself and building the cage yourself. In the case of our build, that is the direction we went. Here are the tools that you will need. First off, you're going to need a tubing bender. Obviously, you're not going to just take these tubes and bend them over your knee. Uh, you're going to need a pretty hefty piece of equipment to be able to bend the tubing into the shape that you need it to be. But the other part of it is you're going to need the dies in order to bend all of the different sizes that you may be running in your particular cage. In our case, we only have an inch and five eighths die. For drag racing, that is pretty much the main size that you're going to be using. And all of the smaller diameter pipe that we will install into this car uh, will not be bent. They will just be straight sections. So in most cases, you can get by with that. Next up, it is really helpful to have one of these guys, and this is a bend gauge. Now, you're going to see my dad using this quite a bit in the following footage, but basically what you do with this guy is you can line it up with wherever you want to put a tube, and this gives you an idea of what the tube is going to look like when it is bent. This will help you get lengths on the straight sections and get angles for uh, all of your bends. Now, you, you may ask, where can I purchase one of these? Well, every bender is going to have a slightly different bend radius. Unfortunately, you really just have to make a test piece, bend a piece 90 degrees with your tubing bender, and then in my case, I 3D printed this piece 
And I put little lines here so that you can tell how many degrees the bend that you are doing is going to require. But yes, this tool is very helpful. Also, you're gonna need a welder. Now, this is not a one size fits all kind of scenario either. A lot of sanctioning bodies actually require a specific process. Uh, for example, in drag racing, when you're running chromoly tubing, like what we are running in this car, you need to TIG weld every single joint. So again, you need to do research for your particular sanctioning body and figure out what kind of process you need to do. Another very helpful tool is the one I am holding now, which is a tubing notcher. Basically, you can clamp a tube into this device and you can change the angle of the tube and you can use an inch and five eighths hole saw or whatever size tubing you're using and you can cope the tube into a nice shape and make it very easy to weld. Also, there's a few other um, miscellaneous tools like uh, an angle grinder with uh, multiple attachments to clean up your joints. Um, an electronic level really help. Uh, rulers, tape measures, markers. There's one last tool that I want to stress to anybody that's doing a cage, and that is a good welding helmet like the one you see here that is tight fitting to your face and allows you to get your head up into areas that might be really tight so that you can see what you're doing while you're trying to weld. As you can see, this fits tightly to my face and it allows me to get my head up and into a lot of tight spaces and make good welds. And that is one of the big keys when you're doing your own cage. Now, when you're building a cage, you're essentially building a box within a box. But the problem is you need to get to every side, every corner, and every edge of that internal box. But you can't, like, open up every single side of the outside box in order to get to that inside box. Oh, and also that internal box has to be as tightly fitting to the outside box as you can get it. As you can imagine, there are a lot of tricks to the trade of doing this work yourself, and I'm going to go over quite a few of them, so let's go to that. As you can see, depending on your spec, there are quite a few bars in the cage, so it can be a little bit difficult to figure out where to start. We like to start with what is called the main hoop. Your first step is to measure the dimensions of the car so that you can basically generate a pattern for the main hoop. Now, metal is pretty expensive and therefore it would be really nice if we got the piece to match the shape of the car on our first try and not waste any material. Therefore, we start out by laying out a pattern on a piece of balsa wood and then using this as a template for the car so that we can see once we bend the piece in metal, it will actually fit the car. Also, we can use this template later down the road to make sure that our bends match up and we can use it for templates on other pieces of the cage that need to mirror the main hoop. Now it is important to note that you will almost always have to over bend the material to get the desired bend angle. Depending on what material you use, it will have more or less spring back as it is called. And unfortunately you just have to figure this out with trial and error. Okay. Spring back about a degree more than I thought it would, but 
make up for that shortly. It's right over there. For a lot of other YouTubers, the cage is kind of a last minute thing. Uh, they always do the uh, big horsepower and shooting fireballs. So because it's a last minute thing, a lot of times their cages don't get painted and they end up rusting and they have to go back and clean all the rust off. Before we install our bars into the cage, we actually like to paint them first. That way you don't get rust and you may say, oh, I still have to weld bars to this. Well, there's gonna be an upper windshield bar that comes across here. All you need to do is you need to take a little bit of sandpaper, sand it off there, and then you can weld the joint there. So we're gonna let this thing dry and we'll get it mocked up in the car. Also, whenever we do a joint where two pipes join together, we drill a little tiny hole. And that is so that the pressure doesn't build up inside of the tube and have nowhere to go when you're welding it. All right, we're starting the uh, funny car portion of the cage. The, uh, the inner side of the funny car cage mirrors the outer portion of the main hoop. So we're using our main hoop template to help us to lay this bar out. And then there's two more bars that come down through here and um, we're going to try and get all this welded up and and then uh, we'll proceed to the next part Once again, for our A-pillar bar, we are making another template out of balsa wood. This is again to verify fitment before we waste any metal making material. So we got to get 100% of the weld on every single one of these joints. And in order to do that, we make holes in the floor what you see in the four corners and you can drop the cage down so that you can get the back side of the weld so once we have this all welded we can get it back up into place and it will be nice and tight fitting um, but we'll probably have this cage up and down probably 20 times by the time we're done with it so just a little trick there it is really important with this type of cage to not paint yourself into a corner. It is very easy to get yourself into a situation where you physically can't get to a spot in order to get a complete weld. A lot of guys will actually cut the roof off of their car and weld it back on at a later date. We wanted to try and avoid this just because this was such a clean, rust-free car. And therefore, you have to really think about how you are going to assemble everything so that you can drop things or uh, draw certain parts of the cage in towards the center of the car so that you can get to the side. And you just have to be extremely strategic with how you do stuff. 
Also, with this particular car, we're actually going to end up cutting holes in the floor to get some of the floor bars welded in, but you'll see that later. This is the point in the job where you really earn your stripes. You're gonna probably have to be laying over top of a drive shaft tunnel. Likely there's gonna be stuff sticking up into your gut. You'll probably have to weld left-handed, upside down, backwards, with the foot pedal in between your knees to control the heat of the weld, and then you get a leg cramp. Congratulations, you're a welder. Alright guys, so we skipped over some stuff. It's basically rinse and repeat from uh, the point that I left off. There's a lot more coping and fitting of tubes, and I think you kind of get the picture. All of the bars in the roof are done, and we've pretty much completed the funny car portion of the cage, as well as the door bars. We still have a few gussets that we have to add here and here and we got to knock out the dash bar as well as all of the bars in the floor. Now I really wanted to end this video off with a completed cage but frankly we are running out of time and I really don't want to go more than two weeks without putting out a video. Also, we are starting to get into some of the rear suspension stuff, and I kind of wanted to do an entire video dedicated to the suspension. So, I think that's where we're going to end this video off. I'm really happy with the progress that we have made. It's kind of funny to think that we picked this car up less than a month ago, and now it looks like this. <laughs> So, I want to say a big thanks to everybody for watching. Next episode will hopefully be on the rear suspension, so stay tuned for that. If you want to support the channel, consider going down to the link in the description and buying a t-shirt. We'll see you in the next one, guys.